Malaria is transmitted by the Anopheles mosquito. The malaria parasite, Plasmodium, depends on both humans and mosquitoes to complete its life cycle. An infected female mosquito bites a human for a blood meal. This is because the mosquito requires blood to produce her eggs. Having penetrated the skin, the mosquito injects anticoagulant saliva to stop the blood clotting and ensure an even flowing meal. The malaria parasite is contained within the mosquito saliva and is transmitted into the human host at this stage. At this stage of their life cycle, the parasites are called sporozoites. They are motile, spindle-shaped cells. Some of the sporozoites enter the liver cells, or hepatocytes, within 30 minutes. Here, in the case of Plasmodium falciparum, they will develop in five to seven days into schizons, containing thousands of new cells called merozoites. In other forms of malaria, this process can take up to 30 days. When the schizont ruptures, the merozoites burst out of the liver into the bloodstream and invade red blood cells. Once inside the red blood cells, the parasites grow and divide. This process takes 48 hours for Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivax, or Plasmodium ovale, but takes 72 hours for Plasmodium malariae, and only 24 hours for Plasmodium nolzi. As these cycles in the red cells continue, so the number of parasites in the infected person increases, which leads to the onset of symptoms of the malarial illness. Some parasites, such as Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale, can also lie dormant in the liver in the form of hypnozoites. These may become reactivated many months after the initial infection and develop into schizonts which rupture. The parasites released invade the bloodstream and cause another attack of malaria known as a relapse. If the red blood cells are infected with Plasmodium falciparum, the cells become sticky on the exterior, which may result in their attachment to blood vessels in major organs. This process is called sequestration. The blood supply to the cells of major organs can become compromised, and this can lead to serious problems, including renal failure, coma, and sometimes even death. Infected red blood cells eventually burst, releasing the merozoites, which infect new cells. This repeating blood stage cycle destroys massive numbers of red blood cells. The symptoms become progressively worse as the disease continues. Major organ failure may occur, and in severe cases, humans can die within 24 hours of the initial onset of symptoms. Some merozoites invading the red blood cells develop into parasite cells with separate sexes, called gametocytes, which are capable of producing both male and female gametes. Red blood cells containing gametocytes do not rupture. Instead, they are taken up by another mosquito, which until now is not infected with malaria, but is feeding on the infected blood. The gametocytes then turn into gametes and fertilization occurs followed by multiplication, which ultimately leads to the production of numerous new sporozoites in the mosquito's salivary glands, thus continuing the life cycle. Different malaria tablets act at different stages of the malaria parasite life cycle in humans, so now let's look at where these work. Antimalarial drugs that act at the liver stage of the parasite are known as causal prophylactics, and prevent the parasite from progressing to infect red blood cells. The combination medication Atovaquone plus Proguanil, brand name Malarone, is an example of a causal prophylactic, preventing the development of liver schizonts. As this combination is a causal prophylactic agent, it only needs to be continued for seven days after leaving a malarious area. Anti-malarial drugs that are directed against the red blood cell stage of the malaria parasite are known as suppressive prophylactics. Mefloquine, chloroquine and doxycycline are examples of suppressive prophylactics and destroy the parasite once it has been released into the blood. Proguanil is another suppressive prophylactic, though it also has some causal prophylactic activity. The duration of the liver stage delays the appearance of the malaria parasite in the blood and this is why the suppressive prophylactics must be taken for four weeks 
after leaving a malarious area. Recommended prophylactic drugs used in the UK for malaria prevention are not effective against hypnozoites, the dormant phases that occur in Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale infections. If the dormant hypnozoites wake up months after the malaria chemoprophylactic course has been completed, malaria may occur. This is not due to drug failure, but reflects the life cycle of Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale. The drug primaquin does kill hypnozoites and could avoid this, but is currently not advised in the UK for malaria prevention.